Hello everyone, Stepan here. In today's video I'm going to go over one of the most aggressive defenses black could choose to the Roy Lopez by white. And that's the Archangel or the Arkhangelsk defense in Russian, a defense which was named after, after a city in which supposedly the Russian grandmasters devised the, the defense and how to play it. It occurs after, of course, e4, e5, knight to f3, knight c6, bishop to b5, the Roy Lopez or the Spanish game. And uh, once again, if you if you lack general knowledge in the opening and would like to learn the common theory, you can watch a separate video I've made uh, on the basics. I will put the link in the description below. But today we are going to focus on the Archangel defense. So a6 by, uh, by black, the most common response, chasing the bishop away, bishop to a4, knight to f6, and castles in this position by white. And now uh, the common way for, for black to play in this position would be to play bishop to e7, and that would enter the, the closed Roy Lopez, and after that the position would branch out into many different openings. But the archangel is the most aggressive way to play, and that's b5 immediately by, by black. And what b5 does, it uh, it neglects uh, black's king safety, it leaves the king in the center, but in exchange for that black gets immediate uh, development and very much initiative uh, when compared to closed Roy Lopez lines such as the Chigorin or the Breyer. So in this position of course white retreats the bishop, and now black immediately plays bishop to b7. And now you can notice uh, that the bishop is, is very active on the long diagonal al already. And if compared to, to some other Roy Lopez lines where uh, instead of these two moves b5 and bishop to b7, black would have played uh, bishop to e7 and castles, then you can immediately see that the black's posi position is much more active uh, in the archangel defense. So after bishop to b7, White now most commonly most commonly plays d3 now, solidifying the center, but that's not the only response. Uh, equally equally good is rook to e1, defending the, the e4 pawn as well, but uh, the e4 pawn doesn't really have to be defended. This is just, d3 is just the easiest way to open up the position, to open up the bishop, to, to develop, give uh, two squares to the knight on, on b1, and to just solidify e4. But if white, let's say, after bishop to b7 doesn't defend e4 and he just plays a h3, I'll give him a nothing move, then it's not as advisable for black to take uh, on e4 anyway. If he takes here with knight takes e4, then rook to e1 by white, knight would, the knight would have to retreat, and now both the e5 pawn and the knight are attacked, because the rook is staring at the king too. So knight to c5, attacking the bishop, and now uh, not taking the pawn with the knight, and just exchanging, exchanging pieces, but a very aggressive move by white d4 in this position, which is, of course, the pawn is pinned, it can't take uh, the, the d4 pawn, and the knight is attacked, so the knight has to capture uh, the b3 bishop, and now knight, knight takes e5, not taking with the pawn, and now threatening a discovered check by the rook, so the best move for, the, for black would be bishop to b7, bishop to e7, covering the discovered check, a takes b3, knight takes e5, and d takes e5. And this position is supposed to be slightly favorable for white, but... I must say I prefer black's bishop pair in this position. I think the bishop pair is extremely strong and especially if you if you picture this bishop coming to the to the a a7 uh, g1 diagonal then black would have a really strong attack. But white has compensation because he has the open a file, he has a bit more active queen and rook in the center and his king is safer, but the position is equal. So after bishop to b7 white has four moves. d3 rook to e1 or some other developing moves, I just gave h3 as a stupid nothing move, but he could play knight to c3, a4, etc, etc. After d3, uh, black will most commonly reply with bishop to e7, now starting to develop uh, his pieces. And uh, the most common reply for, for white would be knight to c3, developing further on. Instead of bishop to e7, uh, in this position after d3, black would go for a much more aggressive uh, try, which I mentioned earlier, bishop to c5. And that's immediately just developing the bishops on the strong diagonals, and this is, I would say, the best way for, for black to fight in the Royal Lopez. This is, in general, when you consider every variation of the Royal Lopez, I think this variation of the Archangel is... Is, is a great way for black to fight fight for a win. And in this position, white would uh, almost always continue with knight to c3. He has to develop his queen side. Black would castle. And now a4 by white would be the most aggressive way. And now we are following 
several high level games i'll mention them a little bit uh, uh, afterwards so knight to a5 in this position of course uh, black would also go for b4 but knight to, uh, knight to a5 is is uh, a bit more precise a takes b5 knight takes b3 c takes b3 and a takes b5 and in this position there is still uh, perhaps 70 games uh, and the highest rated ones are is the one between Garry Kasparov and Vladimir Kramnik from their 2000 world championship match that was a draw there is also a game from 98 in which uh, Garry Kasparov uh, drew Alexei Shirov there is a draw between Anand and Shirov from 98 as well between Topalov and Shirov so you can see that the top players in the world prefer these variations uh, this variation sometime uh, in the late 90s and it, it's still actually very popular but it was re replaced by the berlin defense after after kramnik uh, invented it in the in their world championship match uh, against kasparov so the berlin actually took over from a lot of minor variations such as the archangel which is a shame because archangel is the archangel is a much more fighting uh, defense and you can see that the position is much more active than in the berlin endgame in which the queens get exchanged off but let's get back to the theory. So after uh, d3, bishop to e7 or bishop to c5. And bishop to c5 is much more aggressive, but bishop to e7 is the common move to play. And white now plays knight to c3 developing, black castles and bishop to d2. And this is the position after black castling, this is the starting position of the of the archangel variation which you will most commonly get in all of your games. And the important thing to see is that black was actually uh, developing his pieces uh, instead of castling and getting his king safe just to gain some more initiative and his position is is active he is actually can push b4 in this position he can push further on after b4 with with a5 a4 so black has a great position and, and great attacking prospect prospects and you can you can check out the the video on the brayer variation of the closed Roy lopez i'll also leave a li link in the description and you will see the difference between the attacking chances for black because the brayer is much more passive and it's a maneuvering positional approach while the Archangel variation is a very aggressive way to fight uh, against the Spanish for white. So after black castling, white has uh, four or five different plans in this position. I will show you the sidelines first. Uh, for the first sideline is h3, which is preventing the knight from coming to from coming to g4 and reducing the scope of of black pieces. But most importantly, it's preparing to play uh, in some positions bishop to d3, bishop to e3, knight to uh, knight to h2 and then to push with f4 and open up the king side because if you if you can see uh white is actually able to close down the queen side with playing a3 and bishop to a2 and just not giving uh, black almost any counterplay and if he can manage to push with f4 he would be better so that's the point of h3 and after castles another another move is rook to e1 which is a fairly simple move preparing the uh, the push d4 and the e4 pawn would be sufficiently defended because the bishop is now indirectly attacking e4 as well so it has to be protected so that's rook to e1 and after uh, after castles the one of the most aggressive moves is knight to d5 which is aiming immediately to exchange uh, to exchange the knights and in some positions even after knight takes to retake with the pawn because then uh, the c6 knight would have to move and after uh, a move such as c4 and after uh, black takes white takes he would have a strong outpost for all of his pieces and the past pawn in the center almost if black makes a mistake so this is an aggressive continuation not the most precise the most common move is bishop to d2 after after black castling because that's a simple developing move uh, by the way if you develop the bishop to e3 then knight to g4 could cause some problems so h3 is advisable if you want to play bishop to e3 but the bishop is much more active on d2 anyway because if you imagine this knight moving then uh, the knight coming to a5 to attack the bishop would open up the diagonal the diagonal uh, from d2 to, uh, to a5 and attack the knight so bishop to d2 has its advantages despite being seemingly less active and after castles so bishop to d2 would be the most common reply the safest reply trying to develop your pieces but the most active one if white wants to go for a win would be a4 in this position immediately crashing through on the on the on the queen side and using the fact that black played b5 and b5 is a weakening move in the royal lopez and the point is that white is able to open up the a file at his own leisure with with a4 and 
There is not much black can do. The only uh, reply black has which keeps the position equal is to just push b4 and that's the that's the best move. Because the knight is still on c3 and if you remember positions from the closed Roy Lopez, from the Breyer, Chigorin, etc, etc. Then the knight would usually uh, be maneuvered from b1 to d2 and then to f1 and then to g3 so it wouldn't be on f uh, on c3. And in this position, black can use the fact that he can gain a tempo on the knight, which is still stuck on c3, so plays b4. And after b4, of course, the knight has to move. Uh, retreating would be absurd. Okay, going to e2 and to g3 would give white some attacking prospects, because the knight could aim at the, at the f5 square, and especially because the bishop is now not, uh, not on, on c8, so it's not controlling f5. But a much more active plan is to just transfer the knight uh, to the to the central square d5. So knight to d5, and in this position, uh, white black wouldn't be bothered capturing. He would just uh, play knight to a5, attacking the most important piece in white's position, bishop on b3, and now knight takes c7, getting rid of black's bishop pair. Queen takes c7. He was in check, so he had to capture that. Bishop to a2, saving the bishop, and now d5. And this would be the most aggressive continuation for black. And you can see that actually both sides have prospects. I would say that uh, the most important piece in uh, white's position is the bishop on, on a2 now, which is striking through uh, to the f7 square, the weakest f7 square around the king. And after that, white could even increase the pressure with knight to g5, which is also attacking f7, etc, etc. So white has attacking chances. And he also has a very active queen and bishop, which are looking uh, at these diagonals. So white has a great position. Black, on the other hand, has a very strong knight uh, on a5, even though it's on the rim. It's doing a lot more than it seems. And black is actually threatening to push c5 and break through completely and gain a, a massive advantage in the center. Another uh, another thing is that uh, black never really wants to push uh, with, d, with d4 in this position because then the, the bishop on b7 would be completely blocked and just dead. So black has a plan of advancing his c-pawn, breaking through on the queen side, centralizing his rooks uh, and pushing through... Uh, pushing through white's position. And after castles, this is the position you really have to study, and this is where the most of the games branch out from. This is basically the starting theoretical position of the Archangel. So just decide if you are white, uh, what are you trying to do, and if you are black, decide the plan of attack, and decide how are you going to uh, push through on the in the center or on the queen side. And okay everyone, I hope you got something from this video about the Archangel variation and I hope you learned something about the Roy Lopez. Thanks very much for watching and see you soon with more chess analysis and chess games. Thanks very much. Bye. Cheers.